Welcome to Excelling in Christ, the podcast where we look in the mirror of God's Word and we are totally in love with finding things in ourselves to improve. Now, why are we madly in love with this process? Because it is the only way to move closer and closer to God. And if you're truly into Christianity, then moving closer and closer to God is what Christianity is all about. So finding things inside of ourselves to improve is an exciting part of the journey, and it is part of completing the puzzle of life. Today is part seven of To Clean House, You Must See the Dirt. And it just seems too obvious, doesn't it, to say you have to see the dirt first. Yet many people invest a lot of vital energy in avoiding looking within. And the tragedy is, is that they cheat themselves of the greatest and deepest blessings Christianity has to offer because they'll never get in there and do the work that a true disciple of Christ really needs to do. Now today, the dirt we're looking for is lack of prayer. Paul told the Thessalonians to pray without ceasing and everything give thanks to God for this is his will in Christ Jesus for us. Now that's basically 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18. A lack of prayer or a lack of enthusiasm for prayer points to some kind of dirt inside of us that is keeping us from getting closer and closer to God. Now, I don't know specifically what that dirt may be for you specifically. That is up to you to discover. It may be as simple as being too busy in life. Matthew 6, says we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it may just be that you have allowed yourself to get too busy to really keep God in the priority position that he deserves. Or we could use 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4 where he warns us about getting entangled in the world and sometimes, let's face it, we just get too busy, we get too involved, we get entangled in the world, and we end up taking our prayer life, our, our meditation and devotion time, and kind of bumping it to the back later, further down the list. And then eventually, well, sometimes we just forget about it. It could be an indication of not loving God with all our heart. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 through 38 tells us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And it could be possible, as we were getting involved in this life and trying to make ends meet and do all the things that we have to do, that our hearts just drifted away from God. And if that's the case, don't beat yourself up for it. Just recognize what went wrong. Be glad you recognized it. Celebrate that. And then move on to fix it. Look, there's no way I can diagnose anyone through a podcast. That, that's pretty obvious. The only thing I can do is encourage you to search your heart. And I want you to draw nearer and nearer to God. And that is what Christianity is all about. Getting nearer and nearer to God and cleansing sin out of our life and purifying our hearts. That's what we do. So... Whether the challenge is something obvious or whether it's something that you really have to work on, prayer is part of learning to excel in Christ and get closer and closer to God. So how do you develop a stronger and stronger prayer life? How do you really get in there and find the, the power in prayer, the enthusiasm, the energy of it? First, I would recommend start small. If this is kind of new to you, Absolutely. Start small. Don't jump in big and plan on praying an hour a day right off the bat. I mean, yeah, it sounds nice. We even have a song called Sweet Hour of Prayer, Sweet Hour of Prayer. And that's a great thing. If you're really there and truly engaged for an hour, that is a wonderful thing. But most likely, if you have not really built up to it and developed the prayer muscle, most likely you're just setting yourself up for a failure and you're going to give it a try a time or two, figure out you can't do it, which would not be a big surprise, and then quit. And that would be failure. You're not a failure until you quit. So we in America have a very special challenge because the experts tell us that the average attention span is eight seconds. Now that's just crazy, isn't it? And so the idea that we're going to go from an average attention span of eight seconds, and think about scrolling on Facebook and social media, to sitting down and meditating, praying for an hour, that's a, that's a pretty big leap. So I would suggest that you just start with something very simple, maybe just five minutes, 
and just find that place where you can do this for just you and God, no one else, no other interruptions, as quiet and as solitude as you can get for five minutes, and then just hang in there for a while. And then when, when it really feels like you're ready to take that next step, start building up a little bit further, a little bit further, and maybe eventually 20 minutes a day for this special prayer time just between you and God. Now, if you really want to do an hour, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with an hour. So if you really, really want to do that, maybe try three 20-minute sessions spaced throughout your day, or something like morning and evening and, and bedtime, something along that line. But do keep in mind, there is no magic in a long prayer. There is nothing super special about a long prayer. If you're in a place in life where you feel like you really, really need to just pray all night long, literally, and Jesus did that, then that's fine. If you're in a place where you feel like five minutes is all you can work out and you need to build up, that's fine too. This is just a growing process in which you're going to grow into your spiritual maturity, and that takes some time. It's not an instant thing. The only instant thing I know of in Christianity is the forgiveness of sins. Otherwise, discipleship takes some time. So, first suggestion is that you simply start out small. Don't, don't bite off more than you can chew, as we say here in the South. Now, second, I would suggest that if it is possible at all, make your practice habitual. Make it at the same time each day and start building the habit of prayer. Look, if you have to go down to just three minutes, go down to three minutes and start building that habit and hang on to it. If it takes you 30, 50, 60 days to get that habit where you start feeling uncomfortable that you didn't get your three minutes in, that's where we want to be. And when we get there where the habit has really taken hold of us, then we can start building up to 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, and even further beyond that if you want to. And then the blessing about building this habit is it's going to help you stay with your practice because there are going to be days when you don't feel like praying. That happens to absolutely all all of us. There are days when our energy is low or maybe we've got a bit of a bug or our schedule for some reason just for that day is crazy horrendous. And a lot of people would tell us that's the day you need to pray most. You might have to get up early on those days. But not every day and not every prayer can be an absolute 10. Not every time you pray are the heavens going to open up and you have this wonderful spiritual experience that you have really, really drawn closer to God. So if you have this, this prayer habit that is driving you on, and when you hit these dry spots, when you go through the desert, so to speak, you'll keep going. And you'll find your oasis and you'll come out in a better place. So I want you to start short. I want you to start building the habit. Now, another thing that I would try, if this is possible for you, is try to have your major prayer time in the same room, in the same place, in the same chair or the same corner of the room each and every time. Now, I know that's a little odd maybe, but there is just something about having a very special prayer place where when you enter it and you sit down for your prayer, your body kind of recognizes it and goes, okay, this is time for prayer. And your mind says, okay, this is, this is time for prayer. And it's a little easier to settle into it. And this will become more and more important when you get past the three minutes, the five minutes, the 10 minutes, and you're really looking to settle in for 20, maybe 30, 45 minutes. Of course, I do need to make it very, very clear here. Praying in other places is absolutely good. It is absolutely encouraged. Please, please don't think that I'm discouraging prayer out time outside of this special prayer time. If you're praying with another person in the hospital, you're praying in a group meeting, you're praying before a meal, there are a lot of times to pray. But there is also this very special, this is just me and God prayer time. This is my, I call it my quiet time. You can call it your devotional or your meditation time. This is just me and God. This is just for the two of us. That, that is the time I'm saying if you can get the same time and the same place 
that will help you carry that further. So that's what I'm encouraging. Have that special time, just you and God. Start with three minutes, start with five minutes. When you really start feeling that you've got that solid under your feet, bump it up to six, seven, ten, whatever. But while you're bumping it up, please keep in mind, there's no special magic in a number of minutes. That, that just that's not there. Uh, generally, people who have studied prayer recommend 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, it just seems to be where the average brain fits in fairly well. But there are going to be times where you're not going to get it, and you may have to pray while you're driving or doing some busy chore. That's fine. Or it may be that you are in such a circumstance that you are going to pour your heart out to God literally all night long. But as an average practice, we're looking for that prayer time and that prayer place where you put your Bible in your lap and meditate on Scripture or use the lyrics of your favorite song or poem, all those little things that help bring your heart into that quiet place until you fall into that empowering place of prayer. That's that's the practice we're talking about. So actually, I guess we have two practices of prayer here. We have those spontaneous, you know, and social things that we do in prayer, and those are all good. And then we have that where we go into our closet, as Christ called it in the old King James. We go into our private place, and it's just the individual and God. That's the one we want to build up into that special, special depth. Now, what are you going to do when you stumble? Because guess what? You're going to stumble. That's the way humanity works. There's going to come a time in your life for whatever reason, things just get so crazy, so bizarre, that you're going to miss a day, two, or three, or more. And it could be just that, you know, you ended up in the hospital on tubes and life support, and you were laid up for two, three weeks. It's not that anybody did anything wrong. It's just that even the best plans you make are going to get interrupted. So what do you do when your best plans have been interrupted and you've got knocked off course and now you realize it and, and you're trying to get back on track? Okay, number one, don't play strike when you're out. Don't beat yourself up. You're human. James 3, 2 says we all stumble in many things. So just look at yourself and go, well, there's one of those stumbles. No one bats a thousand. No one does it perfectly. And if you compare your imperfect performance, and it is always going to be imperfect, to perfection, then you're going to fall short, be disappointed, and discouraged, and what I'm telling you is don't do that to yourself. Don't set yourself up for, for, for that kind of failure. So, so you're not perfect. Big deal. Don't you think God knew that before he sent his son into the world? You know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Don't you think he knew that we Christians would bumble and stumble our way forward and not be perfect soldiers that never missed a step? Of course he knew. So when you stumble, just acknowledge it. Learn a lesson if there's a lesson to learn. Get back up and keep pressing on the upward way. Don't, don't give up. I mean, no toddler, after falling for the 50th time, ever looked up and said, well, I quit. Walking's just not for me. Look, you keep trying. And if you keep trying, baby step after baby step, you're going to make progress. And one of these days, you're going to have a prayer life that some new beginner somewhere else looks at and says, man, I wish I could pray like you do. And so what? So what if it takes you 10 or 15 years to find your personal sweet spot? Don't judge yourself by what you imagine other people are doing or by what other people are claiming to do when they may not really be doing it. You just do you. Your prayer life, this special time I'm talking about, is between you and God. Yes, I believe you need to have it. Yes, I believe it is very, very serious. I believe it is part of drawing nearer to God. But it's between you and God. So take it serious, pursue it, and see it as part of drawing nearer to God, which is the ultimate purpose of Christianity. Let me state that one more time, then we'll close. The ultimate pur purpose of Christianity 
is drawing nearer and nearer to God, and prayer is one of the key things that will help you do just exactly that. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining me in the podcast today. I trust you found something helpful that will support you in your spiritual journey. If you find it in your heart, share this podcast wherever you do your social media. And as always, I hope you have a great day.